Good morning. Well, it's Friday. I've come out on my, on my own this morning. Um, it's actually quite nice. I'm only out about probably just on a mile. Sort of bashed out in the dark. The swell is coming up today. It's meant to be coming up to three meters and punching up towards the late afternoon. There's also a big front meant to be coming over about 9 a.m. this morning. The wind's meant to pick up to like 25, 30 knots and it's only going to get rooted towards the afternoon. So I figured I had like a, maybe a couple of hour window if I come out right on sunrise. So I've banged out early. Um, same as usual. I didn't really want to go too far because like I said, this forecast is not looking ideal. So I've just sort of come out a mile onto a bit of a bommy I've showed you. It's about, it's a sort of like an 11 meter bommy that drops off the 16 behind it on sand. Same sort of stuff I always sit on. Um, this one's nice and close to home for me. Uh, I wouldn't normally sit here because it's sort of right in a very high traffic zone, but I figure with this forecast, there's not many people going to be coming past, so I should be okay here today. So my plan is today, I've got a couple of plastics out, a couple of brolis out the back. But I'm going to whack this big boy out here. The guys at Southside gave me the big boy, the big jigging master reel to try and stop a sambo. All my sambos recently and kingfish have all been hitting the plastics I've got out meant for snapper. So I got myself these big, got some bigger plastics that I got rigged up. That's actually just on a hook. It's got no weight whatsoever, no jig heads, just on like a big, I think it's an eight or a nine o hook. I'm just going to drop that straight down. Obviously you can't cast with this. So I'm just going to drop that straight down and just let it waft around underneath the boat and hopefully that will do the damage. Um, I don't know. Whatever. I'm out here. It's my day off. It's a beautiful morning so I'm happy. Whatever happens. If I get a fish then that's just a bonus. So I'm just casting around this beautiful diver Tatula. Had a few problems with it last time I took it out. I think it was just the... Um, I think it was just the casting break. I didn't really have a setup right. I'm casting really light plastics like I got here on this um, light jig head. As my usual, your brawler's five inch plastic there on a really light jig head on the one eight jig head. It was just really light. I kept getting overruns with it, but I've cranked the cast bait up. The cross, did I? I've cranked up the cast break a little bit today, and it's actually casting a whole lot better. Um, I'm not getting the same distance I was getting on it, but I'm not getting overruns, which is something. Um, it's just a matter of getting used to it, I guess. It's a beautiful outfit. It feels beautiful to use and um, perfect for working soft plastics like what I'm doing here. So hopefully I can get myself a decent fish on it. Thanks to the guys at Southside Boating and Tackle for lending me this stuff to play with. Everyone likes to play with fancy tackle and they give me new stuff to use all the time. So yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so I've got something on here. Oh, it's decent. It's not huge. I don't think it's a skippy. Oh, and he's just done me. Oh, Devo. I just felt rocks and then kaboom, gone, just like that. Oh. Well, that sucks. You don't really get many shots and you can't afford to blow them when you do get one. Damn it. I felt rocks grinding and then kaboom, gone, just like that. Oh, that's a good sign though. At least there's something going on out there. Oh, I'm in again on the taller. Hopefully I can stay connected to this one. It's running. Another decent fish, I think. Uh, come on, baby. Oh, I'm gonna bring my camera onto this side. Excuse me for a minute. So I want to net it on this side. I've got lines out on the other side, and I don't really want this to get tangled up around there. It's not a huge fish. It's decent. Come on, let me stay connected. I've had nothing but bad luck with this outfit since I got it the other day. <laughs> Losing that fish earlier on was not good for me. Come on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a pinky. He's down 
type. It's been a long time since I fished with a bait caster. I used to fish almost exclusively with bait casters going back a few years. You can't beat the direct feeling of having your thumb on the spool when you're trying to turn a fish around. You can put your thumb on the spool and you can really feel head shakes and when the fish is going to turn and when the fish is going to burn. It makes it really easy. I'm just going to lift this guy in. Stay on. There you go. Beautiful little pinky on the abrolas. Bull whip again. The Daiwa Tatula. Beautiful little fish. He's just, they love these little five inch bull whips. They just love them. I'm gonna measure this guy because I think he'll go pretty close to size. And if he's size, I'm gonna eat him. Yep, yep, so he's size, he's just over 50 centimetres. He's a perfect eating size fish. Um, all the bigger fish are spawning at the moment. You probably see heaps of reports, heaps of reports from the Coban Sound. Everyone's catching all the bigger fish in Coban Sound. They're all in there spawning at the moment. I don't know if you've ever eaten a fish that's spawning, but they don't really taste that good. And I don't know, I'm not big on eating fish that are in spawning. That's the future of our fishery. So small fish like this, that's perfect for eating for me tonight. Um, any bigger than that, you gotta start freezing it and giving it away and it's not, I don't know, I don't like to do that anyway. I don't like to freeze fish. I like to just eat it fresh. So I'm gonna neck this guy. I'm just gonna see what's going on with my other rod here. Hang on. So I'm just gently working this Abrolis bull whip just slowly slowly this is a high speed reel so just one turn a couple of twitches let it sink they always hit the plastics on the drop so always give it that pause let it sink let it sink give another wind twitch pause let it sink let it sink let it sink twitch pause let it sink uh, the key to snapper is <clears throat> Don't work it too hard. Work it too fast, you just scare them off. They like it slow, they like it sinking. The more time you can get it sinking, the better, which is, as I've talked to you guys before, about my super light jig heads. That's why I run the super light jig heads. Just gives it more time in the strike zone, more time sinking. Um, I think it just makes it more visible. If it's down near the bottom in the weed, it's hard to see. If it's mid water sinking down like that, it's pretty visible. Everything around can see it from a distance. I feel they just get more hits that way. I don't know. What works for other people is what works for everyone. Everyone does it a different way. That's just the way I do it. Um, it works reasonably successful, I guess. Oh, hang on, just got something else on here. I think this one might be a skippy actually. I was just twitching it and it got a bit of a bang. Yeah, I think this one's a skippy. As usual, there's a crazy amount of skippy behind the boat. Oh no, some kind of rest. What's that? There you go. <laughs> Twitch it along the bottom and that's what you get. Must have got a bit too close to the bottom. There's my brawl, it's right in his mouth. See him up. Oh, the sun's a bit rough there. Um, that's it for me, I'm getting out of here. The wind has just swung around to the north. Um, starting to freshen a little bit. It's, not, it's still pleasant now, it's gonna be a nice run back in. But it is forecast, like I said before, the forecast, it really spikes about 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. It really spiked up to 25, 30 knots and it's gonna get pretty rude this afternoon, so. I don't really want to be out here for that. I've caught a fish for lunch. That's about, that's what I come out here for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back in, go and get a coffee, have some breakfast, and I'll um, maybe do a bit of a catch and cook with Lee for lunch this afternoon and um, show you guys how we cook up that snapper.
right, well, I had big plans of um, heading down the beach with Lee and we were going to do a cook up on the beach with a gas mate, but that big, the big windy front that I was talking about this morning has come in with a vengeance and there's a bit of rain coming over and it's um, blowing northwest and quite windy down on the beach, so um, it's pretty hard to cook when it's that windy and get sand all in your food. So I decided I'm going to cook up at home in the kitchen here. So I've got the pan going. I've just got a bit of olive oil in there on a reasonably low heat. Um, what I'm going to do is whack a bit of butter in there in a minute, but for now I'll just let that warm up. So I've got a couple of slabs of fish here um, from that fish I caught this morning. So all I'm going to do is just cut this into probably... Well, that's pretty hard to hold that and cut at the same time. No, that's not going to work. Lee, come here and film this. There's no tomato. Oh no, lettuce. So all I'm going to do is just cut this into small pieces. I'll try to keep pieces out of the same thickness together, so then they all cook evenly together. That's pretty much it. And then I'm going to get this stuff here, Tandako, lightly seasoned fish. Get on this stuff, this stuff is awesome. I'm probably going to use half, this, half of this packet here and I'll use the rest a bit later on. Simple as this, just whack your fish in there, coat it with a bit of the old crumaroos. I'm going with the thin pieces first because these will cook really fast. Lee's got some lettuce going. Lee, do you want to um, butter some bread as well? So I'll whack that in there. Just get some butter. This is actual butter, um, not margarine. Sizzle. Just spread that around the pan a bit. And then whack the boys in there. I don't do too many at once, I just that'll probably do for now. I'll come over here and dust these other ones. Yeah, you can see it's starting to get a bit dark outside now. I think the rain's probably only half an hour, an hour away. You can see my flag there, it's blowing pretty strong from the northwest. So I'll just dust these boys up here. I don't want to cook this too much. These, this piece here is actually quite thin, so that won't take long at all. This piece here won't, it's not really that thick either. So I just slowly cook this away. Just keep your eye on it. I'll just look inside here and watch it. You don't want to overcook it. The way I tell is just dig the thing in. If it cuts right through like that, that's not quite done yet. As soon as it starts going, the, the spatula will go right through it. You know it's done, you get it out of there, don't overcook it. Righto, so that's all cooked up. You can see that. A little bit browned off, beautiful, simple thing. Oh, I've got some beautiful, fresh multi-grain sourdough here I just picked up from the bakery before. So all I do is just break up a bit of fish here on the burger. Just break it up a little bit. Probably enough. No, I'll whack a bit more on there, why not? Got some Nando's Perrionais. Oh! <laughs> Whoops! No, you can use whatever sauce you like, tartare, mayonnaise. This is just like peri, peri and mayonnaise combination. I'm guessing like it's pretty much empty. Apart from that stuff, I just squirted all over the bed. Use a knife. There you go. There you go. A bit of lettuce. And then the lid goes on. Could put tomato on that as well, but we haven't got any tomato. <laughs> it's pretty much that simple. I came home in the fridge. There's no tomato in the fridge. So we're not having tomato today. But that's it. Fish burgers. Simple. If you like our stuff, like, subscribe, comment. Hopefully next time we'll be smacking into some big fish again. Yeah.